let's talk about what is going on in the beekeeping industry right now. So this is not a pleasant thing to talk about. Um, honestly, it, this is a uh, sit in your car and eat a whole tube of Pringles kind of uh, kind of discussion. Um, I won't say that I did that, but I did. Um, so about three weeks ago, uh, you know, I, I, we started noticing as an industry that winter losses were much, much higher than normal. Um, I broker a lot of bees in California, which means that a lot of people send me their bees uh, to California to pollinate the almond groves, which we'll talk a lot about in a minute. Um, but they send me their, their bees and and pay me to spread out their bees in in the almond orchards. And so I, I get truckloads of bees in from all over the country and from all sorts of bee operations. Normally, you know, if I, you know, if I'm talking to growers uh, or whoever I'm supplying with bees, um, if if I have forty thousand beehives that I need in order to fulfill my contracts, I usually buffer that by about ten percent. So I, I make the assumption that about 10% of the bees I receive uh, are not going to be good. So if I need 40,000, you know, I'll get 44,000 contracted from beekeepers. This year, I heard some rumblings in the fall and I was a little nervous. And so I, I you know, buffered that more by about 20% just to be safe, you know, 10% above normal. And it was very evident as soon as we started getting truckloads of bees in in January, as soon as we started inspecting hives from all over the country, that we had a major problem. Um, I would have needed to buffer those numbers by um, 50 to 70 percent in order to get the right number of hives. So, you know, we were seeing 50 to 70 percent losses on beehives that uh, we were receiving in from all over the country. Now, the average annual loss rate for honeybees, if we look at a 12-month period, the average annual loss rate is about 45 to 50 percent, which is absolutely ridiculous. It shouldn't be that high. But that's an entire 12-month period. In the loads I was getting in, I was seeing 50 to 70 percent loss rate just from the winter. And then you add that on top with another 40%, <laughs> you know, of, of an average annual loss rate. And in a lot of these operations, that was resulting in a 100% loss or a 70% annual loss or worse. And, and so that is staggeringly abnormal. That is not something that, uh, that I've ever seen in, in 20 years. You know, if we go back to colony collapse disorder, when that first hit in 2006 and 2007, you know, we did see some huge losses. We, we suddenly went from prior to colony collapse disorder, a, a pretty low average annual loss rate of 10 to 20 percent. All of a sudden, we jumped up to 40 percent. And that's when we realized we had a big problem back in 2006 and 2007. And, uh, you know, it, it changed everything. The whole industry changed after that. And I was, I was a teenager, uh, but I was already a commercial beekeeper. And, and so I was, I remember that. I mean, that the, it was like you would walk into a room of commercial beekeepers and, uh, you know, no one knew what to do. Uh, a room full of scientists and researchers and commercial beekeepers and, and no one knew what to do. No one knew what to say. It was just devastation. And we're seeing a repeat of that um, today. Um, it's the same losses, the same symptoms, um, the same uh, feelings that I remember feeling back in you know 2006 and 2007 of what on earth is going on here? What can we do? What's happening to our bees? And you know the 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 troubling thing is that. Back then, we went from a 15% average annual loss rate to a 40% average annual loss rate. This time, we're starting out at a 45 to 50% annual loss rate, and we're tacking on another 30, 40% loss rate on top of that. I wouldn't be surprised if when we look at the data, when we finish gathering it all, the last 12 months 
could be closer to that 80% average annual loss rate for beekeepers on a commercial scale. That's completely unsustainable. You know, if when we when we have a 40 or 50% loss rate, as long as your remaining 50% are healthy, you can rebound. It's not easy, but you can rebound. Um because you can take 50% of those hives, split them in half, and you're back up to your previous numbers. When you're at a 70, 80 plus percent loss rate, and a lot of the beekeepers that have seen those losses, the remaining 20 or 30% are not healthy, you can't bounce back from that. Um, you know, you just can't recover from that anymore. So that's the boat that the industry's in right now. Um, it's really concerning. Um I'm sure everyone's first question is why, what, why, you know, what's happening? And the answer is we're not sure. I, I will say this is really breaking news. This has all happened over the past, you know, it's come to light over the past couple of weeks. I think the industry is better prepared for it. You know, last time we hadn't seen anything like that as an industry. And so it took, months, you know, to start really collecting data and collecting samples of bees and comb and for, you know, for, for researchers to mobilize and, and beekeepers to voice their problems. It, it was a very slow process. And this time it's happened much faster as far as the response goes, you know, within, you know, within three or four days of us raising the alarm in the industry, you know, the USDA, independent researchers you know we're swarming the central valley where all the a lot of the bees are right now and doing testing uh well not just in the central valley i mean beekeepers whose bees collapsed all collapse all over the country you know researchers are going out there taking samples of bees comb living bees dying bees dead bees uh pollen samples everything to try to figure out much faster this time what's happening we're seeing this occur across the country um, it's not limited to one area. It's not limited to, you know, one type of bee. It's not limited to, we're not seeing any correlations um, with, uh, you know, one specific call. So my guess is it's a combination of a bunch of different things, pests, pathogens, pesticides, you know, and our bees have been dealing with a lot for a long time. And something has pushed them over the edge again, like like it happened almost 20 years ago now. Wow, 20 years ago? Well, yeah, I mean, almost 20 years ago. Wow, we're all getting old, folks. Um, so, so something's happened to push them over the edge again. And, uh, and so we're going to have to buckle down as beekeepers and work harder, work smarter, do research, and figure out what's happening. And, and I'm confident as an industry... Um, we will survive. Uh, bees and beekeepers are incredibly resilient. Um, we'll figure this out. But um, I think the industry just changed. You know, I don't, I think uh, much like we look back and say, wow, CCD changed everything in the bee industry almost 20 years ago. I think we're there again, where we say, you know, I think everything just changed. Um, and and it's a it's a new playing field at this point. So um, I'm going to show you guys some pictures. Uh, this is, you know, I, the, the background of this picture, these are all dead beehives. You know, lots of friends have sent me these pictures of like, oh my goodness, you know, we just finished checking all of our bees and these are the stacks of dead beehives. You know, pretty much every one of these pictures represents a million dollars worth of lost bees, you know, and uh you know, these are these pictures are easy to come by right now because um, they're they're just everywhere and in all over the country, but a lot in California because that's where all the bees are. A lot of the bees are right now. I don't think that this is some new disease that's going to spread everywhere. I, I don't think that's what's going on here. We would have already identified that. We would have already been able to see that. Um, I think it's more of the same. Um, and it's, it's, uh, the bees have reached a breaking point and we're going to have to find new ways to better care for them so that this doesn't happen again. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, a common question I've been getting the past few days is what about you, Blake? How are your bees? How's your company? Uh, and, you know, 
I will say I feel fortunate in some respects and that I I've got good friends that I've lost everything, you know, that, that a hundred percent of their bees are dead. Um, and, uh, they don't know if they can come back from this and I'm not in that position. Um, we have our bees, uh, in, in kind of split into two different areas that are two different operations. And, um, one of those was hit very hard. Um, and then the other is, is we're seeing more losses than normal, but they're still doing really well overall. Um, the business where we build bees to sell, because a lot of you are probably buying bees from us, um, actually looks great. Um, and so, you know, I'm not anticipating any issues with with selling bees this year. That that side of the business looks looks really good. And uh, that's what's so bizarre is there are operations out there that are fine, um, but most aren't. And even the ones that are fine are still seeing unusually high losses. So. Uh, I'm super concerned about the industry and my friends and those that have, have suffered these incredible losses. You know, some of our, some sections of our business have been hit really hard and that's really hard. Um, but we'll, we'll pull through and, and enough are still good um, that we'll be okay, but it's, it's a painful year for sure uh, for, for the, the industry. So, so what we're asking for as an industry now is we're asking for more research dollars. Um, most B labs and researchers don't have a budget to really address this concern. And so we need to get them funded quickly so that we can have answers quickly. And then uh, we do need some financial relief for beekeepers who have lost almost everything. And, and that's so important to our food supply in the United States. I mean, if we want to protect our food supply, produce our food domestically, um, I think that's also a, a security issue for the United States, then we need to take care of beekeepers who are the backbone of all of agriculture. You know, 80 to 90 different crops rely completely on bees for pollination. Um, and so we, we have to protect the beekeeper and we have to protect bees if we want a stable, affordable food supply that's produced domestically. So we really need legislators to pay attention to this. Uh, we really need uh, the media to pay attention to this. We need to get the word out that this is happening. If you would like a succinct summary of this, um, uh, a group of us with the American Beekeeping Federation, American Honey Producers Association, Project Apis M, um, have put together a letter uh, for press for a press release that has some data and statistics and what we're seeing in it. I'd be happy to share that with any of you. So you can reach out to the bee supply and just say, Hey, for Blake, uh, when you email it and uh, I can get you a copy of that letter. Um, if you, if you find me on Facebook, just look for Blake Shook on Facebook. Um, I made a post this afternoon that uh, shared that letter uh, with some of that data that you can copy if you go find me on Facebook. So that's what we need right now. We need to spread the word and then we need some pretty fast relief if we want to uh, keep a lot of beekeepers in business. So that is that. Uh, it's not great news, so I'm sorry, uh, but I think it's really important that you're all up to date on what's happening in the industry. And I can also link below when I publish this on YouTube, I can link to that letter and some more information down in the comment section.